anemic are used to restore deteriorated concrete surfaces and provide corrosion proofing for high wear, impact, and chemical attack locations, as well as secondary containment and grounding materials for pumps. These unique polymer concretes are considered one and done toppings, providing fast turnaround times on projects and decades of corrosion proofing for owners. Welcome to Coatings Decoded. I am Mark Thomas with Tanemic Company. Today I'm joined by Dan O'Toole, Sales Director for Processing and Manufacturing Market. Dan, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mark. So today we're talking about polymer concretes and we're all familiar with regular concrete. We've seen that throughout our lives. Uh, everyone's very used to seeing that and how it's, it's used and how it's laid, but what's the difference between concrete and polymer concrete? Well, uh, polymer concrete uh, has a lot of the same appearances and looks of regular concrete. It gets hard, it's gray, and it sits there. Uh, however, the big difference is, is that uh, polymer concrete is both water and Portland cement free. So you do not have that in polymer concrete uh, that is taken out and replaced with high performance resins that are extremely chemical resistant. Um, they also, the polymer concretes are also uh, usually uh, very, very low in shrinkage, which is important when you're pouring uh, a, a piece of uh, slab or a platform or uh, something like that. So you, uh, you get less shrinkage. The uh, various different types of polymer concretes have varying degrees of shrinkage, but most of the, uh, the epoxy types are considered uh, shrink resistant or almost none whatsoever. Um, the other big difference, of course, is uh, the chemical resistance between the two. Uh, concrete has uh, very poor uh, caustic and acid resistance uh, due to the Portland cement in it, and that's a very limiting factor. It also has uh, you know, fairly poor uh, tensile and flexural strength uh, and compressive strength also uh, compared to polymer concretes. Uh, just kind of talking some numbers, if you have concrete from a compositional standpoint, it's going to be anywhere from an architectural grade, like you pour on your uh, pad at your uh, on your garage for about four thousand compressive strength, all the way up to some industrial numbers of seven thousand. Um, the polymer concretes start at over double that at the high end of concrete, fourteen thousand pounds of compression. Uh, also, your flexural strength is very, very marginal uh, compared to what a polymer concrete is. It's usually only about 10% of the uh, compressive strength. And the tensile strength also is, is pretty poor on it. So it's not a really stout material uh, for use with corrosion proofing of concrete where there may be thermal shock and chemical attack. All right. So there's another classification that sounds similar to this called polyurethane cements. It, would that be the same thing as what you just described with polymer concretes? You know, that's kind of in the middle, Mark. Uh, we're very fortunate at Tanami to have these products with the exception of concrete, of course. Uh, but we have polyurethane cements, and uh, they're great products for use in the processing industries. Uh, 80 to 85 percent of projects can really benefit from the use of polyurethane cement, which is different than uh, polymer concrete. Polyurethane cements have a very smooth consistency, whereas polymer concrete is just that. When you use the term concrete, you're usually talking about some type of a heavy aggregate in there. And with uh, the polymer concrete line of Tanemics, the Lavacrete, uh, which I failed to mention the name, it's Lavacrete, um, we have you know, aggregates in there, including uh, up to about three eighths of an inch in size. Uh, the polyurethane cements are very, very smooth consistency and fines in there, and they go down very nicely with uh, rakes or camber uh, push, uh, push units uh, to move it around. And they have very good thermal shock resistance, too. Um, their compressive strength uh, starts at the high end of a concrete, 7,000, as we said before. And, of course, I, I have to be honest, there is ultra-high uh, performance concrete, but that's way out there in a stratosphere and cost. And by the way, you don't have the chemical resistance even with the higher strength. So, but the polyurethane cements like our Stratashield, you have very good uh, uh, compressive strength, very good flexural strength and tensile strength to them. Um, and they go down uh, much thinner, quicker and faster and are less expensive than polymer concretes. So that's kind of the difference, but in a lot of processing plants, it is the go-to product. So it sounds like the 
the real key, the separation of uh, regular concrete, even polyurethane cements and polymer concrete is that polymer concrete is resin rich. Uh, you're, you're replacing that water with a high performance type of resin and that's what gives it its corrosion protection. That's correct. And there isn't just one uh, polymer concrete offered uh, in the lava crete line. We have three. Uh, we have an epoxy. It uh, goes by number 469. We have a Novolac epoxy. It goes by number 479. And we have a couple of vinyl esters. But our main one is our 489 uh, lava crete. And that's kind of the beauty of it. We can select and dial in the right polymer concrete for the pro right project. For instance, if you had uh, let's say a sulfuric acid area, where it's seeing constant contact on a process floor of maybe high end 40%, you know, that's not too bad. I mean, day in and day out, our 469, our, our regular uh, high performance epoxy polymer concrete will perform very well in that type of an atmosphere. Now, if you step up to, let's say some high, higher sulfuric acid, like over 70%, or like in food plants where you have hot caustic uh, which is a very aggressive uh, material, or, or hot frying oils that like come off of industrial fry fryers at uh, potato plants, uh, you know, up in the Northwest, you know, for frozen French fries. You've got unbelievable amount of ther thermal shock and you have some chemical resistance issues with the polyurethane cements and you couldn't even get out the door with a concrete. So that's where the Novolac based uh, selection would come in. Now, let's say you've got, you know, the witch's brew all over the place, you know, a, a, a plating plant uh, where they're dipping different chemicals and, and acids and cleaning of caustics and solvents and that. That's where something like the, um, and high temperatures, that's where the vinyl ester comes in and plays a much better role in the selection of a polymer concrete for the project. So a conventional system in an aggressive area, maybe with some chemical contact or acids, would be if you have deteriorated concrete, you would replace the concrete with conventional concrete, you'd come back over it with some kind of chemical resistant lining or containment system. Why would you go towards polymer concrete instead of more of that conventional approach? That's a that's a great question. And it kind of goes with uh, a little saying we have, I guess, around Tanemic, when we're, we're talking about, this might be a good potential for uh, uh, the lava creek for the polymer concrete. We call it a one and done. So just like you said, Mark, many areas perform well with standard systems, whether it's polyurethane cement or the multiple coat systems. What do I mean by that? Okay, that's where you have to go in. Let's say it's a very heavy duty secondary containment area or one of those process floors that has seen impact and chemicals and they're breaking batteries with bulldozers all over it at a recovery center, things like that. Well, a typical system, like you said, you'd have to go in there, prep it. You'd have to prime it. You'd have to resurface it. You'd have to put a mortar coat down, possibly. You'd have to reinforce it uh, with some type of a, a, maybe a woven roving fabric for thermal shock and extra abrasion resistance, or at the very least, a chop strand mat, and then another chemical performing coat on top of it. That's all great, and you have about 125 mils of protection. But guess what? With the one and done, we call it with lava creep, many times you can go right in and pour whatever you need to restore that floor from three eighths of an inch up to eight to 10 inches in one pour. So now you've got everything done in one application. You've restored your surface and you've chemically proofed it from the very top mill all the way to the bottom. Because as you said, you've got that, uh, that resin rich chemical resistant binder in there. There is no water, there's no Portland cement. And you've got the aggregate for the thermal shock all there. So you don't need the uh, mats and reinforcements of those types in it. Uh, not always can you get away without using a primer. So it's not always just one and one. But many times, probably 80 to 90% of the time, you never even need to put another top coat on it. There's no need for an additional coat. So that's why you would go to the lava crete and the polymer concretes. The other reason, of course, is time savings. I mean, you just heard all those steps. And this is the beauty of this type of a product. You get in and you get it out quickly. So you've described the time savings. Essentially, you're, you're putting everything together into one product that's just placed once instead of multiple steps and multiple coats. Can you describe what's required for surface preparation uh, and how is this actually uh, applied on the job site? Well, uh, 
Placing of polymer concretes is labor intensive. I mean, there is no doubt about it. You need uh, bodies and equipment, okay? And the reason why you need the bodies is because you, you have a shorter working pot life than a lot of other coatings and or concrete, you know, which you have hours and hours to deal with. So when you get ready to start up, you got to have the people there. And with equipment, I'm saying you've got to have backup. Now, if we're doing a small two or 300 square foot area, that's not a big deal. You can use a power mixer with high torque and so forth to mix and blend your aggregates and your resins together. But when you have large jobs of resurfacing in a plant, You've got to have the good equipment, which is basically a grout mixer, not a concrete mixer, but a grout mixer with the rubber fins on it, high torque capability, uh, usually about 10 cubic feet uh, or so. It'll hold the mix. You want twice whatever you're going to mix for cubic feet. Uh, you need wheelbarrows there, you know, to transfer it. You need a crew moving that over. You need to have screed strips down. You can't take a screed box and push this stuff. I mean, it just won't. This is a concrete, you know, because of the aggregate in it. So you basically scissor it off with two by fours or other slide type boards. Uh, you need sometimes vibration equipment. If you're pouring or ca uh, casting, you know, something like a new wall or a pump base or something like that, that's always good to have. If you're grouting uh, a base plate, which we'll talk about grouting and casting here in a minute, um, they have like lances that you snake into the hole, go all the way back to the end of the plate. And as you're pulling it out, as if you're injecting, I guess, a pork roast or something to put in the oven, you know, the polymer concrete's coming out, filling that annular space. So it is fairly labor and equipment intensive, but uh, the, fact, the fact of the matter is it goes quickly and you're in and out all with this type of one and done uh, method. So you've described the placing of it, but in reviewing some of the technical documents, the application sections for these types of products, they'll reference casting, placing, or grouting of the material. Can you describe those three and what makes them different? Right. Yeah. They, um, it's an EMIC. We have application guides as well as, of course, uh, you know, we help our, our contractors, you know, out there in the field if it's their first time on a polymer concrete job. And we should talk about who, who can apply this, of course, and, and then we'll go into those types. But Concrete folks are really good at this stuff, okay? Because they're used to building farms and that. And when you tell them build a farm, we want to pour a new sump pump out of polymer concrete. No problem. Bang, bang, bang. What size you want? How deep? So forth. They know how to line it and then put in the plastic and grease it up so it doesn't stick and so forth. Uh, but certainly any industrial contractor who deals with secondary containment or floor coatings is capable of doing this. Now, we in our application guides and our data sheets, we talk about casting placing or topping is kind of one and the same and grouting and casting is basically what I just described where you have a form uh, maybe you're going to pour a new platform for a pump to sit on you can pour that entire thing out of polymer concrete you just make make up your forms pour it in and so forth you can rebuild a wall you can't trial this material up you have to cast it so you have to have a wall there to hold it in, in place Topping or placing is basically when you move it in a wheelbarrow and you put it on the floor. Okay, you're dealing with horizontal areas and you're spreading it out. Grouting is a whole nother uh, section of polymer concretes. And uh, there's a standard, uh, the American Concrete Institute, uh, it's uh, 351.5 through 15. It's an entire uh, grouting standard, how to go about uh, grouting a base plate. So what you have, you have chemical pumps, they sit on, on platforms, uh, uh, they're attached to a platform, and there's an annular space between that and the concrete uh, base it's sitting on. Well, you want to have good contact with that plate to that base. So these grouting go, go in that annular space. So not only do you get vibration dampening, let's say it's a motor, it's not a, a chemical pump, but you have vibrations. So you're filling that space with a chemical resistant uh, vibration dampening system in that annular space. And again, you can do the whole top of that base plate too. So that's basically grouting. We have different, we, the beauty of the lava creek polymer concrete is you can use the same resins, the A's and the B's, and you can use the same aggregates, but by a bit of a different adjustment in the blind, you make the grouting material a bit looser. So that's the difference between grouting, ca casting, and placing topping. So we, we've described what polymer concrete is, some of the advantages, uh, just to 
towards the conclusion of this uh, podcast, can you just summarize some of the the reasons why a contractor or even a facility owner should really take a look and a strong consideration towards polymer concretes? Well, again, the, one of the beauties of it is um, is basically uh, how fast you can do a project, but also how fast you can return it to service. So if you're in 77 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to be pulling those farms off in three to four hours, even at 40 to 50 degrees, four to six. You're walking all over it, uh, six to eight in those temperatures, and you got heavy traffic going over it the next day. So it really is user-friendly for the contractor and the owner. But to summarize it, I, I guess I'd have to say that there's three main benefits of a polymer concrete and using lava creek. It's basically the extremely long-term high uh, protection you get in a highly chemically charged area. Initial uh, cost installation is there, but the return on your investment with having a half an inch of material there and not worrying about a break in it pays off in the long run on a cost per square foot per year. It's also the simplicity of it. As we kind of discussed, the one and done, you know, it's you pour it, it's there, it's chemically proof. You walk away. And then again, as we just discussed, the quick return to service. You can put an area back into service for an owner much quicker uh, any time of the year. That's great. Well, Dan, uh, you did a great job describing what polymer concrete is, why it might be a consideration over conventional resurfacing with traditional concrete and then lining that with some type of chemical resistant liner. Uh, it sounds like there are great benefits for polymer concrete, uh, if especially if you're trying to turn that that's, um, go a faster return to service for that facility, uh, and especially if it's an extremely severe environment. So thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. And thanks for joining us for the latest Codings Decoded. Thank you, Mark. Replacing deteriorated concrete and installing a chemical resistant lining system takes time. Using the newest technology, such as lava creed, can help keep budgets in check, plant shutdowns to a minimum, and bolster your reputation as the go-to in preventing corrosion.